Hey, what's up, man? What's going on? How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. Just at home. Nothing crazy. At home for quarantine? Yeah, I'm, I'm in Chicago. Suburb Streamwood. How's the weather awesome. there? Bro, it's like up and down. Like one day it snowed like five inches and then now it's like sunny and bright the next day. But it's been like raining all the time. Oh, gosh. Not good weather to go out and train, huh? Not really, no. So, just keeping up with the runs and stuff. Absolutely. All right, guys. Welcome back to another Footy and Coffee Conversations. I'm excited for our guest today. He's a younger player just making a name for himself in the U.S. So, excited to hear his story and his journey so far. So, to get started, if you just want to uh, introduce yourself, um, say your name, Say what position you play, what club you play for. Uh, I'm Patrick Segris. I play for the New York Red Bulls. I'm a left back, and I'm 22 years old. Yeah, so recently, uh, we'll get into it later, but recently drafted just a couple months ago by the New York Red Bulls. Yeah. Very exciting. Awesome. <laughs> I hope the uh, the excitement of that hasn't worn off yet. No, not at all. It still like, feels surreal, definitely. Uh, I bet. All right, so just uh, tell us a little bit about your youth career, uh, where you were playing, um, how you decided what university you go to. Yeah, so I started at Soccer's FC when I was like six years old, and then uh, luckily it was like closer to home as opposed to like MLS and like all these other teams where kids like travel an hour, so I played there when I was six until 17 and then I went off to school graduated college just like last December so when I first started out of high school I graduated on a Friday and then on the next Tuesday I had to start school right away so and then uh part of my reason for choosing Marquette just close to home so my mom family can come watch me play um, when you were in, in high school, were you thinking professional soccer was a goal of yours? Yeah, definitely. I think it was a goal just considering the fact that I wanted to graduate high school early and go to college early so I can go throughout this process. So, yeah, it was definitely a plan, something I would want to do, and I'm happy to be where I'm at right now. Were you Were you looking at any other schools besides Marquette? I was considering Loyola and uh, Michigan State just because those seem to be close to home. I don't think my mom would have been too happy if I went to, like, a school in Cali or Florida. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what, was, what was the reasoning uh, for Marquette out of those options? What drew you to the school? Uh, what drew me was just, like, the family entity of a Marquette soccer player and also – uh, at the time, they had just lost to Virginia in the quarterfinals of the NCAA tournament. So I think that played a big role. And then my uh, triplet cousins went there as well. So Okay. Yeah. So, so you, get, you get to Marquette. What's kind of your first, uh, your first reaction of being around the team, being around the guys? Yeah, I mean, it... At first, it wasn't the best. Uh, I had a little bit of an attitude. <laughs> but uh, when I was there, I was just, like, so young compared to all these guys. I was just a 17-year-old who had just finished high school last week. So uh, eventually, I uh, settled down a little bit, uh, got used to the team, and then progressed from there as well. Now, how did, how did the first uh, preseason go? Because we've had – different interviews and some of the guys um, came in like Lenny and failed their, their preseason fitness test the first time. Uh, do you have any, any problems with that right away or you kind of fit in? Fit in uh, not, not really. I mean, uh, we didn't have a whole lot of fitness tests, but uh, just like the way Red Bull play is just like so high paced, high intensity. So when we would just go into trainings, so it would just be like, everybody's at a hundred hundred percent hundred miles per hour so and just caring from how i play as a left back 
and how I played at Marquette, I fit very well into the system. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't think I've ever seen you tired on the field, actually. Yeah, never. <laughs> um, so at Marquette, obviously, you have, you have a lot of success. Um, the team does well some of those years, some, some good years. Um, what's kind of your growth that occurs during those four years? I think for growth – it comes from just learning from the older players and how things go about and just to whatever comes your way, whether you like it or not, just to like grab it by the horns and just stay positive throughout the track. And that's how you succeed the best in college. Yeah. Marquette's a, I think a, a very interesting university in the sense that you have this like university in two blocks away. Oh, from, I know. It goes straight like, through Milwaukee. Yeah. It, it's crazy because I I had a I dated a girl from Marquette and had visited there, and then oh, really? we had to take the the vans to get home at night because the neighborhoods were yeah it all. the limos yeah <laughs> oh those were those were the days <laughs> good times um I think my my favorite goal from yours at at Marquette was maybe the Villanova goal when you guys were I think it was your, maybe your junior year. And you scored to go up two zero from outside. Yeah, the yeah. It was. I just took like a hit, and then it took a nice little deflection into uh -huh. the top corner. Yeah. Um. You had you had a real nice slide celebration afterwards. Is but that is that planned, or how do you decide what your celebration? Is? Honestly, that one I kind of just like went for it. I had never done it, and I wanted to do it. So the grass was slick, so I tried, it and it worked out well. But then I tried it again uh, my senior year, and then I, I, like, just completely ate it. And then after I ate it, like, it was it was put, like, all over NCAA soccer and all sorts of stuff. So it was funny, though. My uh, my junior year of college, we, had, we were playing on artificial grass, and a guy scored game-winning goal, and he takes his shirt off and just penguin slides. Yeah. And like the athletic director got real mad about it. <laughs> and then he gets in the shower and his whole chest is just like bleeding. Because it was like dry artificial grass. So uh, Yeah. <laughs> so no always, way. always make sure that the uh, the grass is real wet before you do that. So exactly. Like, <laughs> can't be on turf either. Um, so during the during the summer months in between uh, university, what what were you doing to stay in shape and stay ready? Yeah, so the first two years during the summer, you're saying in college? Yeah, in college. Yeah, so in college, the first two years I was with Bridges and then went to Europe the first year. Second year, I had to do some like summer school, so I just was training with Bridges. And then the next two, I played PDL once in Charlotte my junior year, Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, FC United Chicago the yeah, last summer. Yeah. How are, uh, do you think the, the summer months are those? I think, uh, in my opinion, those are interesting months because you have some players that take it really serious and improve a lot. Some people take the summer months – kind of, you know, just to stay shape and come back into preseason and not really as, as much growth. Do you think those those played an important role in your improvement? Yeah, I think it depends on, like, what the type of person you are or what type of player you are. Like, some people just come back naturally and just need that rest, and then others need to be training all the time. And I'd say I'm one of those players that needs to be, like, doing something all the time. So I don't feel like I, like, lose any sort of thing. So uh, I think it was important to play all those uh, in those leagues and with those teams just so I get that experience over the summer. Yeah. Um, when, when in university is the MLS becoming, looking like a realistic option for you? At what point? Uh, I'd say after my junior year, I played well. I made the Big East first team, and that's when I kind of had a realization that this could be become that this dream could turn into a reality. So that's when I started. So then, talk through talk through the process, kind of of what what it looks like for players who don't know. Um, 
when you finish your senior year, what's the process into the MLS and the draft and all? Yeah, so first out of college, you you sign with an agent, and then uh, that agent uh, either gets you invites to certain combines or trainings with teams, or uh, you got to get invited specifically for, like, an MLS or Las Vegas combine. And fortunately, I was invited to both of those uh, without the agent. And then uh, after I went on those combines, then the draft took place. Um, were you were you thinking New York was a, a realistic option for you? Did you have an idea of what teams were looking at you? Yeah, I thought it was a realistic option from the sense that uh, I actually went to like their personal uh, combine in December, and I played well there. And then I really loved the style, of, like the way they played and things like that. So I thought it was a real possibility, and I was hoping to get drafted by them, and thankfully I did. Yeah, so... Obviously, uh, talk then a little bit about what, what draft day was like. What were the emotions um, of seeing your name pop up there and getting the call? Yeah, it was definitely surreal. I mean, I had all my friends and family. There's a camera crew, all sorts of stuff. And just to have that experience and share it with family was crazy. And I wasn't expecting to go as high as I did. So once I did, it was a great feeling. <laughs> Kazi with the shout out. <laughs> um, yeah, you were drafted number ten, which is which is a big honor to be taken in the top ten. That's the highest I believe anyone from Marquette has been drafted. Yep, it is. So definitely, definitely leaving your mark on the university. Exactly. That that was a good feeling for sure. Yeah. So you get for those who don't, you get drafted, um, but a contract isn't necessarily guaranteed at that point. Uh, so there's a lot of exciting emotions, but you still have a lot of work to do. Um, what happens once you get drafted? Yeah. So after you get drafted, you go into preseason with the team. And depending on how you're playing and how they like you, they'll decide whether to develop you on one of their uh, affiliate uh, USL teams, or they will sign you to a first team contract and I was signed to a first team contract with the Red Bulls. Which one was uh or maybe it's hard to say, but was either of those the draft or signing the first contract? Which one was the more emotional experience? I'd say the draft was for sure because I was just at home where I like always grew up as a kid, friends, closest family members, so that was definitely uh crazier feeling i'd say so you go you go into uh preseason with new york red bulls um and now now it's your first time really playing with guys that are a lot older not just maybe four years five years older uh what's the what's kind of the emotions those first couple of days entering into a you know a, a serious professional program like that yeah the emotions are high for sure i mean you want to leave a good impression you want to prove to the coaches that you fit in well with the team and then also just being able to do those duties that you have as a younger player and just earning the respect of the older guys and learning from what they're telling you on the field because they're there to win and they want to help you the best way they possibly can. Did you, uh, do you experience any friendly rookie hazing? Not really, no. The only time I'll, I'll say I get a little bit of hassle as a rookie is just when we're playing rondos and I'm always in the middle so <laughs> if it's if it's ever between you and another guy you're going in yeah exactly <laughs> always so then uh obviously the season's on hold right now but you were able to was it two games that you were able to start yeah Cincinnati so and then the uh, Real Salt Lake What's the what's the experience the first time walking out onto the field starting an MLS game? It's surreal because when you're younger, you always dream of playing in like a big stadium at the highest level, and to be doing both is definitely the best feeling you could imagine. And obviously, your adrenaline's high and things like that. So, but 
good we got a point well points from each of the two games yeah how uh how did you deal with because obviously there's a lot of emotions uh in your first games going on the start how did you kind of deal with that and calm yourself down to focus on the game at hand i kind of just like thought to myself like i'm here for a reason like they believe in me it's not just luck so i've i've worked for this my whole life I've been playing well, doing what the coaches have been asking, and then just being able to apply that on the field. Any any difficulty kind of drowning out the the noise on the sideline? I mean, it's you got to just get used to like the atmosphere you're playing in, and then it kind of breezes past you once the whistle blows. So, not too much, no. <laughs> So you said with uh, with New York Red Bulls, you guys play high pressure, uh, high energy football. Try to win the ball back high up the field. Um, how is that? How is that for you? It fits obviously your game style well. Um, yeah. How you're going instead of you know some games you're defending. Uh, you know, freshman last year at university. What's it like now guarding some of the 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 wingers that you have to defend against? And going into every game, you're going to be playing against a top-level athlete. So just got to take what the older guys are telling you and take what the coaches are telling you and play to the best of your ability. Absolutely. Um, so now now we're on kind of a break from playing. You're obviously back home training. Uh, I assume that they're giving you – New York sending you workouts and everything on how to stay in shape and stay ready. Yeah, we've been – uh, doing Zoom workouts as a team just so we have that connection there. And then uh, we've also been just having these runs or if you have a field space, you'd uh, do these dribbling patterns. So just all sorts of things to make sure we're staying sh staying in shape. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, we've kind of been calling it a separation season when interviewing players. I think yeah. it's a, an interesting time because it's the first time a lot of players are on their own having to be motivated to, to train and do all the work themselves. Uh, how have you physically, obviously, okay, you're getting the workouts, um, you're doing Zoom workouts with your team, but how mentally uh, when there's not necessarily a guaranteed start time are you staying focused and determined? Yeah, I think uh, just to stay mentally sharp and focused and ready to go, you just got to stay as busy as possible. Just find new hobbies, maybe uh, work out longer, but just take your time, things like that, just so you're staying busy and staying on top of things. Now, you're uh, one of your new, I don't, know, don't really want to call it a hobby, I'll call it venture, is uh, some new soccer socks. Some new yeah. Socks. Talk, talk a little bit about that. How did that idea come? Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, I always just, I like the feeling of true socks and I wanted to provide uh, an equipment that's cheaper, that is more affordable for players and also a, not like a sticky material so you're not slipping all the time and just basic colors as well. It's called Stuck In which is a soccer phrase we all say, it gets stuck in. So just something on the rise. So just seeing where that plays out. Yeah, so there's a Instagram account stuck in. If you search that, you can find it. You're doing pre-orders right now? Yeah, pre-orders. And uh, if you do group orders, they're a lot cheaper as well. Okay. I'll be sure to, I'll be sure to link it in the in the bottom yeah. <laughs> episode um are you are you gonna try to push new york red bulls to to sign with your company uh i don't think so i don't think the league would be very happy with that <laughs> hey you know what you gotta you gotta get your business going right <laughs> yeah exactly um all right so kind of a fun question we've been asking guys uh that have been been through bridges for those who don't know, the reminder, Bridges is um, an off-season program dedicated on helping professionals stay in shape, um, and then guys from college or looking to make the jump to professionals prepare themselves physically and mentally for the pro game. So we're asking guys, what's your, 
what's your five aside team um, and we're asking to not put MLS players in because otherwise they'll probably be chosen every time so to get yeah. some different answers out there <laughs> Yeah, I would say my five-a-side Bridges team would be uh, my good friend Derek Dodson, plays at Georgetown, uh, Mike Novotny in goal. Are we doing five-plus a keeper? Five-plus keeper, yeah. All right. So Derek, Mike Novotny, David Abador, uh, Kaz. One more? Two more. Two more? Ooh. I'd, I'd go X and Simon. Okay. Simon so Miguel. Yeah. You so got funny. all of them. I like it. Yeah, we've uh it's been it's been funny. There's been some uh some saltiness from people not being named to teams and stuff like that. Really? Yeah. They'll they'll come on they'll come on the interview and be like, Well, I guess I'll have him on my team even though he didn't have me on his team. Yeah. I feel that. Uh so you obviously now I You've had a little a break from from soccer, but right from college to New York to preseason to the games, it was kind of go 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 traveling across the U.S. for different combines, everything like that. Yeah. Um. How how now is it feeling to kind of have a have a a breath maybe to actually sit back and realize like you're a professional player? Uh, I think it's been nice to be home with family during that and uh to be doing the workouts i mean i'd much rather be in the team setting and being busy all the time so uh during this time it sucks i mean i hope everyone's staying safe staying healthy but it's definitely nice to kind of just realize how far you've come and where you are at now as a player so absolutely yeah um are they saying any any thoughts, any ideas of when, when your schedule is going to start back up? Um, not really. We're just taking it step-by-step uh, step and just being as prepared as we can. So it's all that we can ask for at this point. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting how they decide to, to get the teams back going and then if they're going to play every single game or what's going to happen with that. So yeah. not, not maybe the ideal situation for a rookie entering his career. Yeah, not not really, but you just got to stay positive and just take it and keep staying sharp and focused. Yeah. Um, what what are ways, obviously, um, you know, I, I remember you playing in college and now seeing you in the MLS, you've definitely improved, you've grown as a player. How, how do you yourself um, improve? How do you kind of self-analyze? What's that process like for you? Yeah, I would say for me is just learning, uh, just taking things as they go. Try not to stress as much or overthink things, because in the end, it's just a game that we all love to play and are passionate about. And yeah, good, good. Um, all right, fun question. Who who is your your style of play? Who do you model your game after the most? Uh, Andrew Robertson of Liverpool. Okay. Yeah. Are you are you a Liverpool fan? No, nah, I'm a Tottenham fan, actually. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, then, then I was gonna say I'm sorry about Liverpool and what's happening for them and their their. I season. know. I wonder how that'll play out, but we'll see. Either way, there's an asterisk by the year, right? Exactly. Um, if you could go back to starting when you started, you know, playing academy ball, 15 years old, whatever, what what advice would you give yourself now? To academy players, I would just, I mean, I've been saying it all day, is just to, like, work hard, like, all the time as much as you can because it goes a long way it, goes a long way like outside of soccer as well so just being able to work hard every moment you get and just don't take things for granted because it goes by fast yeah um for your career obviously you you came in you played a lot even in college from the get-go you were starting games getting a lot of minutes um has there what's kind of been the biggest challenge that you had to overcome in your career 
I think uh, one of the biggest things I had to overcome was in college, just you got to realize that not everybody is on the same page. Some people are more focused on school. Some are more focused on soccer. Some are just trying to get a job or look good on the resume. So a lot of things come into play. And I think it's important to just realize like what other players are going through because not everybody has the same mindset or like thinks the same way that you do. So how how did you, uh, I guess, overcome that? How did you stay focused on what your goals were? Surrounding yourself with people who have the same mindset as you. 100%. Is that, obviously, Marquette's a, a, a good soccer program, so maybe there's more players like that. Um, that are more focused on the, the soccer aspect of it. Um, but you're entering your freshman year, you're coming in early as a 17 year old. Was that difficult at first or were you pretty self-motivated with what you were trying to achieve? I was self-motivated, but it was difficult, obviously, just trying to find your group of people that you're hanging out with besides your class. And then also like, you're going in and taking spots of older guys and they're not good just hand it over so yeah. yeah um is there is there any player you're excited to defend against looking forward to defend against specifically this upcoming season i'd say uh one player i'm excited to go against would be carlos vela on um, because he plays as a right winger and a forward so uh, being able to play against him would not only be surreal because he represents the Mexican national team, but also a good test on where I'm at as a player. Absolutely, yeah. No, he's uh, we all watched him on TV yeah. playing and balling out. Exactly. Um, what What to you would be the biggest difference between uh, university soccer and now MLS? What's the maybe in the way they prepare and film sessions and training, what's kind of stuck out to you as the biggest differences or leaps of difference? I'd say uh, two things stuck out a lot for me. One is just, it's very high intensity all the time. There's no breaks, uh, no stopping the clock and everybody's dying to win. And then the other thing I would say would be just uh, the mentality and the detail of every little thing you do at MLS matters and is analyzed, whether it's through film or uh, the in trainings and things like that. They, uh, for rookies, they usually put you guys in housing with other players, correct? Correct. All right. So are you, are you with MLS guys or who are you living? I'm with, with uh, two guys who are on the second team. Okay. Uh, Red Bull too. How's, how's that been going? Is that, is that helpful to, you know, have, you're in a new city, you're in a new team. Is that helpful to have that as your roommates? Yeah, I think it's nice because they're just out of college as well. So they're in the same boat as you. And then uh, just living on your own also, you're kind of just back in like a house with these guys. So you're kind of back in that uh, college living situation in a sense. So yeah is there is their training schedule pretty similar to your guys's yeah it's very similar they just train the uh, two hours after we start okay so you gotta wake up first yep exactly <laughs> what's uh just talk us through briefly just a, what a typical day looks like if it's a training day yeah so a training day i wake up go to the facility eat breakfast uh bike stretch uh change and then after that we go on the video for 30 minutes then we go back out bike then we train and then after do recovery or sit in the hot tub so that's what probably five five hours something like that yeah something like that okay so full schedule yeah exactly <laughs> um i'll try to maybe it's bad wording of it but what what do you think it means to be a professional soccer player obviously you know the professional parts you're getting paid but what does it mean to embody what a professional soccer player is 
Yeah, I think it means a lot. It shows you've sacrificed a lot for the game over the years. And if you've had this dream of uh, getting to where you are at today, uh, you really just got to not take it for granted and just be able to uh, realize that you are doing this for a living now and that uh, it's a game you've loved, so you got to be fortunate for it as well. Uh I got asked today a question by someone wanted to know, uh, with being New York Red Bulls, what's the, the Red Bull situation in your guys' locker room? They, they stock you guys up with that? Yeah, they actually, uh, we have a lot of Red Bull on deck, and then uh, everywhere you look, our logo's showing. So, is it, is it common to have the Red Bull before games? Uh, not really. Uh, yeah. Yeah, not a, lot, a whole lot of people drink Red Bull. I do here and there, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, we were talking to uh, Brian Bennett yesterday, and he was talking about he used to do the Monster Red Bull before games until he could, like, see his heart pumping out of his chest. Oh, really? and Switch it up. <laughs> uh, let's see, we got a question here. If you had one team to play for, who would you play for? Ultimate Dream Team. Ultimate dream team. I'd say Tottenham. My favorite Tottenham. team. Yep. I'm under what manager? Uh, I'd go Mourinho. Yeah. You think you think he would let you do much uh, flying up and down the field? Uh, no, not a, not at all. But he knows how to win. So. Yeah, at the end of the day, winning's winning's the best feeling, right? Exactly. Um. Now you. Just briefly, you said you, you played at Soccers. For those who don't know, uh, Soccers is a notoriously famous uh, academy in Chicagoland, produces a lot of professionals. Uh, you obviously now are joining the ranks of some legends that have come out of Soccers. Uh, do you guys have any communication with each other? Is there you know advice from the older guys that have gone through it at Soccers? Uh, not a whole lot. I mean, I talked to Chris Mueller here and there. He's probably the closest guy I could relate to, but not a whole lot of communication outside of it. I mean, uh, some of the guys I played with, I've remained in contact with that are not playing professionally, but it's good that we all stay in touch because we've been throughout this process for a long time. Yeah. Uh, in college, you're focused obviously on professional soccer and that took a lot of your time away, but what's maybe one, one memory that you have from university, your favorite memory that doesn't involve soccer. I'd say uh, one of my favorite memories would just be like the preseason we would go through with uh, everybody on the team because school's not started up and all doing the same activities and things like that. And your favorite your favorite memory so far with New York Red Bulls? Uh, definitely uh, getting drafted would be my favorite memory. But uh, yeah. at, along with that would probably be our first win as well and start as well. So everything yeah, very, in those two days. Very, very cool experiences you've had. Uh, I think New York Red Bulls has just a sick stadium as well. Exactly, Red Bull Arena. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, all right, man. I appreciate you taking time. I know you're busy, so I appreciate you yeah. wanting to do this. Yeah, no uh, problem. Thank I'll you for sure, having me. Yeah, I'll be sure to link your uh, your new socks. Sweet. In. Yeah, do it. Go out, I appreciate go out and get it. Get yourself a pair. I'll try to uh, convince my players to rock them. Yeah, definitely. Let me know. For sure. All right. Sounds All good, right. man. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. See ya.